This is a story about a boy whose mother is a slave. He is separated from her when he is only a few weeks old. After that, his grandmother takes care of him. When he is six, his grandmother takes him to the plantation to work and leaves him there intentionally. He never recovers from this betrayal of abandonment. Later on, he is sent to work for a ship carpenter by his master. Despite a ban on teaching slaves, the carpenter's wife starts teaching him the English alphabet. But soon, her husband finds out and forces her to stop teaching him. Determined to read and write, he continues to learn from neighborhood white boys by giving away his food in exchange for lessons. As his knowledge and vocabulary grow, he begins to read newspapers and political books. The more he reads, the more aware he becomes of the social injustice against him. One day he buys a copy of the Colombian Orator, a popular school book, which helps him to understand the power of spoken and written words. He learns that educating his people is the key to fight against social injustice. So he starts holding church services to teach other slaves how to read and write. His weekly services grow in popularity, with over 40 slaves attending. But soon, angry slave owners shut down his class. He gets sold to a new master. His new master is a monster in form of a human being. He enjoys whipping his slaves who won't follow orders. Our hero endures this brutal whipping for about six months until he can't take it anymore and one day he fights back. The fight between him and the brutal master lasts for two hours and eventually the master surrenders. On that day he restores his sense of self-worth and he vows to never let anyone beat him again. At the age of 20, after two unsuccessful attempts, he finally escapes from slavery by impersonating a sailor and flees to the north. To continue fighting against injustice, against his people, he decides to spread his knowledge and wisdom. Whenever and wherever he can, he attends abolitionist meetings. In 1841, after attending an abolitionist convention, he takes the opportunity to become a lecturer for the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society. This leads him to public speaking and writing. Soon, he starts writing and publishing books on slavery and founds an anti-slavery newspaper titled The North Star. A lot of white people aren't happy and don't want to let him do these things. And one day, while participating in a lecturing tour, he is chased and beaten by an angry mob before being rescued by a local family. But he is determined to continue fighting his fight against injustice. In addition to abolition, he also participates in the first women's rights convention. Soon Frederick Douglass is recognized internationally as a human rights leader fighting against the slavery system and standing in for women's rights. He goes on to become a trusted advisor of President Lincoln. He advises the president on the treatment of black soldiers and urges him to give all black men and women the right to vote. In 1863, President Lincoln declares the freedom of all slaves. Douglas becomes the first African-American citizen to hold a high U.S. government rank. He is also the first black person to receive a vice presidential nomination, although he did not campaign for the office. He keeps on inspiring people to use the power of education to affect positive change in themselves and society. His words will inspire future presidents and inspire those who will fight for justice after him. Frederick's journey teaches us to never give up in the face of adversity. Frederick Douglass once famously said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are men who want crop without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roars of its many waters. This struggle may be a moral one, or it may be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. This is Dare to Do Motivation, real life stories. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay blessed.